On this episode of Carcass, we take a trip back in time with one of Japan's most popular sports cars. The Z Platform has a unique history as a performance automobile, and we plan on taking our 1978 280Z one step further. We'll check out the ability of our Datsun on the road and the dyno. Hey guys, Jeremy and Jimmy here from Carcass, and we are driving in a car that's actually older than the both of us. Yep, we're driving our Datsun 280Z. It's a 1978 model, and these cars are really neat, I think, because uh, from what I know, they kind of transcend the automotive spectrum in that a lot of people really, really like them. And uh, I don't know, I've seen quite a few around. I always like the look of them, and they just have kind of a classic just styling to them. We've had this car in our shop for quite some time. It's been on the back burner, and it seems like no matter who walks in to the shop, when they see the car, they're like blown away, A, by the condition, mm -hmm. and B, just because they always have a story like, my buddy had one, I had one, my dad had one, in your case. Yep, my dad did have one. I don't know if it was a 240 or 260 or 280, but um, it's kind of funny that he had one for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's a really tall guy. Right. And we're pretty tall. Our proportions are a little bit different. I got longer torso, you have longer legs. And if I sat straight up, I might hit the roof of my head. But right. um, my dad, he's six foot four, really long leg guy, and he fit in one. And yeah. that's just kind of weird. Like he's so tall. And this car from the outside, it's very small. The other thing is that he's typically just like a domestic classic muscle car or truck guy. Like he's had couple Chevelles, you know, Z28 Camaro, stuff like that, even a Cuda. And then, you know, him telling me stories through the years, he tells me about a Datsun that he had. And I go, like, what are you talking about? Right. I, I would never imagine that you would bought one. So I just think that's cool. And it just goes to show, like, all types of different people like them. Yeah, and this one's like a bone stalker. We picked this up from a guy that's in the service. He was in the Air Force, mm -hmm. originally came out of California. Um, it was brought to the south here, and he was growing his family, and obviously it's just a two-seater, so he was upgrading, so that's how we got our hands on it, but it is. It's bone stocks, been restored. It's got the original 2.8 liter inline six cylinder in it. I think that's why the hoods on these things are so long, because right. to cram that engine in here. Yep. But it's 90 degrees outside today, and we've got the windows up and the air conditioning on. Yeah, and it works too. And it works, and this thing is extremely comfortable, which is kind of a rarity for what you and I like to build, work on, and do. Usually yeah, exactly. they're loud, obnoxious, and yeah. full of horsepower. Yeah, this got this has a full interior. Um, it's pretty comfortable. It's not too loud in here, so yeah, I'm I'm happy with how this thing rides. Yeah, and we're not going really extreme with this car. Mm -hmm. We're gonna no. keep it super basic on the let's say, nostalgic side of things. Yeah, so we're gonna kinda upgrade everything underneath, suspension-wise, put a little bit wider wheel and tire on it, get this thing to just really drive out nice, and then as far as powertrain goes, we're gonna leave the engine pretty much stock. We might upgrade a few things, just depending on what we can get into. We'll definitely get it refreshed. Um, I think that's a no-brainer. And then the big thing that I think will make this car really fun is we'll put a five or six speed in here. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's kind of our style. Yeah, you know we're gonna do a lot of little things to the car, but really pay homage to what the Z is and where it has come from in history, really. Right. And so then on the outside too, you know, this is a '78, so a few years into these crash bumpers, right. which are. To be honest, they're big and they're ugly, right. so we want to get rid of them, just kind of smooth the car out, um, maybe recess the marker lights or get rid of them completely. We'll just kind of see. We both don't like cars that are too smooth because it's you can take it too far and then it stops looking like what it was supposed to be. So right. we just want to kind of refine it a little bit, kind of give our own twist on it, and uh, yeah. It should be a cool build. Yeah, we're not here to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. We're just going to make the wheel look better. Yes, right. exactly. So I think from here, like normal, let's get it back to the shop. Let's throw it on the dyno. Not that we're going to make any more horsepower. We'll run through the engine and stuff, but it's always 
fun to figure out a baseline horsepower that we have. Right. And compare it to stock. Um, and then we'll just tear into it, get started, and have a bunch of fun with it. Yeah, love it. Let's do it. We'll strap our 280Z to the dyno and see what horsepower the inline six still has. All right, guys, while we're down here in engine power, we have the Datsun strapped to the chassis dyno. Well, Jimmy's in the hot seat. Pat and Frankie are going to be running the computer, and I'm just a spectator. So all there's left to do really is fire this thing up and see how much horsepower it makes. And I'm standing over here. Man, runs really nice. Smooth. Ready? You're, you're running the rocket ship there, yeah. so uh, <laughs> remember, no touchy the brakey. No touchy brakey. Got it. it as high as you dare, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you and, dare. And crank her up. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> That's risky right there. I don't even know what red line is in these things. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have not paid attention. Guess we'll find myself. out. Oh, baby. Always scary. Pitter patter. 118.24 horsepower and 133.81 pound feet of torque. That's not bad. <laughs> it didn't smoke. It's a little stinky though. That's a little, a little stinky. stinky. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's 1978 fuel yeah, injection. That's old. <laughs> I mean, that's a. That's, I mean, but that, that's almost solid 120 numbers. horse. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good uh, fluids warm up run. Do yeah. another one. Yeah, sure. Back and, it up. Uh, I'll try not to get it to kick down this time. How's yeah, that? yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just get it up. Uh, uh, you kick down a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep, just get it up to third gear and then let her rip. Get it up to third gear and, uh, and roll into her. Yeah. Sure. Pretty good first run, though. I mean, I'm I don't in, see anything I'm crazy. Impressed. I don't see any leaks. It didn't smoke. Doesn't, doesn't do anything crazy. No. Nope. No. Still sounds it good. took its sweet time getting there, but. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, here we go. Were you scared? Uh, not really. Not really? It, you're, it, you're it was, it was smooth enough. Though. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like it wants to take it. Time to really yeah. get going. It runs like glass. Oh, it runs like this. Smooth, you can't even tell it's really running. It's really nice. Yeah. There we go. 123.67 horsepower, wow. 138 and a half pound feet of torque. You great gained five horse just on the yeah, run. So. Perfect. Just yeah. Getting her up to Tim. That was the heat tune up. Wow. Yeah. 123. I like it. I mean, I don't even know what they're supposed to make. Yeah, I so, have no idea. It's I mean that seems decent for a yeah. 1978 inline six. Was this two two eight, right? So Yeah, we yeah. know nothing about the yeah. condition of the engine. Not a thing. Well the condition I mean, of the so engine. So far is now we easy. know, yeah. Right. Because otherwise it wouldn't make a nice bullet. Actually, there's nothing when something's like old like that. Typically, a lot of these times the, the cars sit around a lot, yeah. so you just build up a lot of carbon in them. They just don't get driven yeah. hard or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's probably the hardest it's had for RPM, the highest ever, almost probably ever. Yeah, yeah. So. But I mean, it has a nice smooth graph, so we know it's running good. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty decent power for the era. So. Then the car has been restored. From mm -hmm. what we can tell, the odometer reads like a forty-seven thousand ish. Uh, 45, yeah. 45,000. Don't know if it's 145 or 45. Yeah. It looks like it has a lot of original stuff on it yes. still. Yeah. yeah. It's a time capsule, really. Maybe been painted once or something. Yeah. It but stayed, it stayed in the same family for really? its whole life. Yeah. 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 yeah right. Wow. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? Is, it, is the third one backs up the first two numbers? So do one more and call it good. Hey, uh, you, you, hey, you yeah. can stay and do them all day till you run out of gas as far as we're concerned. Yeah. I, I think it's cool. It sounds like it's turning twice the RPM that it actually is. Yeah, you know? yeah right. Yeah. And so it, 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 it gets kind of scary sounding. But uh, yeah, if you want to do another one, yeah, I mean, might do it. That'll, it'll be probably everything. Good now enough, you got oil right. temp, you got yeah. rear end temp. You probably have level off. It'll probably level off. Soon yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Him. All right. Stand back, though. Everyone good? Yeah, let her buck. Go for it. All right, here we go. This is what it would sound like if it was roll racing somebody. That's what it sounds like, yeah. There we go, kind of leveled off. 
What is it? 126.2 horsepower and 139.4 pound-feet of torque. 126. All right. Pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. How much decent. does this car weigh, you think? Uh, 2,800, 2,900. Yeah. Okay. Under three. Uh, that's yeah. probably that pretty bad. sporty yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. That was uneventful, but that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 I think we'll just unstrap it, take it from here, and go get started, right? Yep. Just take it all apart, I guess. Yeah. Time to get to work. Yeah. Thanks, all guys. Right. Hey, no problem. Anytime. Coming up, we get a quick history lesson on the Z platform. All right, guys, we've got our Z back in our studio. We just got it off the dyno and laid down some pretty good numbers out of our inline six, and we even took this thing for a test drive. But believe it or not, Jimmy and I don't know a whole heck of a lot about this S30 chassis. But we do know that the Z series was Datsun's flagship model for the US market, so we wanted to make sure that we built this thing right. So we brought in a 240Z to give us a little bit of inspiration for our car. We also brought in Nissan's heritage expert, Jonathan so he can tell us kind of the differences between these. So Jonathan, yep. this obviously 240, ours is a 280, there's a 260, somewhere in between. What are kind of the main differences between those? Yeah, absolutely. So from an exterior standpoint, they look relatively the same, right? right? So one of the key differentiating factors though is definitely the front end. So, I mean, of course you can tell that the bumpers are obviously different. Yeah, uh, so we've got the, uh, the very large uh, park bench bumper, so to speak, yeah, on the 280, whereas we've got a nice clean, thin uh, front bumper on the 240. Um, this was shared between the 260s though, which is really interesting. The, the thin front bumper made it halfway through and then of course, uh, due to regulations, we had the, the larger bumper mm -hmm. in place. Uh, but aside from that, you know, you've got the front turn signals, which are also different. So you'll notice on the 280, they're in the grill, whereas uh, on the 240s, either integrated mm -hmm. down into the bottom valence. Um, and then one of the other key differentiating factors is out back. So with the tail lamps, you'll notice uh, just from the back, uh, you'll be able to tell between 280 and 240 because of those differences. Um, but as you work your way into the inside, subtle differences. So the dashboard is a little bit different. So as you guys will see, as well as this inner console, but ultimately it's pretty much the same. Uh, but of course, the key factor between all of these is the engine and mm -hmm. its displacement. So the 240Z at 2.4 liters kind of set the standard. Moving into the 2.6 liter and the 260 and obviously the 2.8 and the 280. Uh, one of the other key elements that changed though was uh, the 240Z obviously was carbureted mm -hmm. as well as the 260. But as we moved into the 280 with the upgrades in technology, um, as well as uh, trying to, you know, to compensate for emission controls, uh, the 280Z uh, in 1975 was introduced with fuel injection. So so uh, that's uh, one of the other key differentiating factors. So, you know, so this, this Z platform was a huge leap forward for dots in, in this, you know, muscle car, sports car era. There's no doubt that this is a sports car. I mean, it's a two seater. It's got a long wheelbase, a long nose to fit the inline six in it. Um, and they share the same wheelbase between the 240, the 260, and the 280, but how did this car really help Datsun get into this muscle car era of the 70s? Yeah, totally. So of course, you know, Datsun at the time was known for economical cars. So you had your 510, your B210, your 610. So outside of that realm though, you know, one of the key factors of, of you know, what Nissan is as a brand is, uh, you know, racing. And, and so there's, there's that aspect that was transferred over from uh, the inception of the brand in Japan over into the North American market. And of course, you know, you can't go racing without, you know, uh, a dignified sports car. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this really kind of cemented uh, the sports car racing here in America for, for the brand. And so what was great about this is that you would go and race on Sunday and then go and sell cars on Monday. And what that did though was cement the fact that these cars were, you know, not only great on track, but then great on the street. And from a value point of view, especially at that time, having something that had a big inline six with good power, manual transmission, rear wheel drive, that still, you know, was less than, you know, $4,000, mm -hmm. you know, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And so at the time that really uh, captivated a lot of those who came to buy these cars and it just grew that enthusiast base to what we have now seven generations later. And what's really cool is that my dad, and you've heard all these stories, yeah. he's a huge, you know, domestic muscle car guy, Chevy in particular, but he had a 260Z, I believe, and he's taller than me and he fit. And oh. like, that was one thing we're really impressed with is that we've driven this thing a little bit and we fit no problem and the interior is really nice and it's just, it's a solid, nice car. 
Absolutely, and, and that was actually one of the key design goals for this car, is to make it for the American market. Right. So, of course, it, it sounds crazy, but you know, you know, in Japan, you know, the cars are considerably smaller in, in most cases, but mm -hmm. with the 240Z, with all of its dimensions, it fits the average American. And so sure. that's why, yeah, as you mentioned, you know, that's a, a key reason why a lot of folks did really like this. Because if you were to get in a British sports car, you know, it's it's a lot tighter, it's right, right. smaller, but then you get into this and it feels really, really good. Yeah. And you know, Jonathan, the 240, the 260, and the 280, they're all super similar, but there are the differences like the bumpers, so that gives us a lot of inspiration, maybe to get rid of our bumpers and just kind of clean this car up and give it more of that JDM feel, plus the fact that the new Z is out, so that gives us even more inspiration. So thank you so much for bringing in your super clean 240, and there are some things underneath the hood that I do want to take a peek at, so Jimmy, why don't you pop that? Let's look at your carburetor setup versus the fuel injection set up and we'll just kind of see how clean it is under here versus the mess we have under ours yeah. for now. <laughs> Today on Carcass, we pull out the drivetrain of our 78 Datsun 280Z. We'll freshen up some old gaskets and hit it with a fresh coat of paint. Then we adapt our six-speed transmission to bolt up to our inline six. Plus, we take a ride in the new Nissan Z to get some inspiration for our Datsun. What's up everybody, welcome to Carcass. Last episode, we got a little bit of inspiration from our guys at Nissan. They brought in a Cherry 240Z for us to look at, and so now it's finally time for us to start on our car. So underneath the hood is exactly where we're gonna start, and the idea here is just to pull everything out. This is gonna be a heritage build, and we are gonna be doing a color change, so we are literally gonna pull every piece out from underneath the hood, so when it comes time to doing some body work, we can get to that step and lay down some good color. Now, Jimmy and I aren't very familiar with this car, so one of the things we did before we took the hood off is we actually took a bunch of pictures using our cell phone. That way we know kind of where everything goes when we get back to putting this car back together. But for now, I think all we gotta do is grab a whole bunch of tools, just start ripping some stuff out from underneath here, and we'll get the engine out of the way. Yep, sounds good to me. For disassembly, we'll mark some wires and brackets with some masking tape to help us when it comes time to reassemble. Try to get this radiator out of here and get the front stuff out of the way. Some of these parts are headed to the scrap bin, while other parts will be retained for final assembly. Alrighty, with most of the stuff off of the engine, we're gonna go ahead and get the transmission out of here and the exhaust too. This should be a pretty easy one. Yeah, I'll get this other one out. Kind of 
There it goes, there it goes. A bit. There it goes. All right. It's stuck on like dowel pins or something? Yeah. Got a little block of wood behind the engine to make sure it doesn't tip back, so. Yeah, now we just gotta weasel it out of there. The dipstick tube ain't gonna be very much help because it's rigid. I don't know if we disengage from the transmission, but you keep going. I'll tell you when to stop if we need to. No, we'll go right around that, right around that, right around that. Uh, hang on. What do we got? What's that? Oh, that is a shift linkage got stuck back in the hole. I don't know how that happened. And good. Okay. Nice. All right, it's sitting in the middle. We start tearing into our 2.8 liter, giving it some new components and a killer paint job. The engine in our 280Z is the L28 engine, which is the biggest in the L series offered from Nissan. It's a little bit different than the predecessors, the 240 and the 260. It's really just the displacement, which is 2.4 and 2.6 liters respectively in those cars. And also uh, some more differences just getting into the emissions era is the 280Z was the first car in the Z series that had fuel injection. It was a Bosch style multi-port injection and it also had the full setup with uh, EGR, had a catalytic converter. And even though the 260 was carbureted, it had the provisions for EGR, but it didn't have a cat on it. So the 280Z was really the first full emissions uh, setup car offered in the US market for the Z series. The basic plan for our engine is just to take everything off the outside, get a good look of what the long block looks like, take off the intake, exhaust, AC compressor, alternator, everything like that, kind of analyze what the condition of those parts are in and just kind of take it from there. We do want to paint the engine uh, to match the quality level of the outside, although it will be a different color, more of like a uh, what would come stock in a 280Z from 1978. But we don't want to get too far on the internals of the engine, just because this engine, it's a good running engine, so there's really no point in taking it that far. As far as upgrades go for our engine, we're gonna keep it very simple. On the maintenance side, we're gonna throw in some gaskets just to make sure this engine doesn't leak. And on the intake side, we're gonna be going with the N42 intake over the stock N47. The differences between those two is that the N42, it doesn't have the provisions for the EGR system, although some did. But the biggest thing for us is that it doesn't have the webbing between the intake runners, so it just goes again into that really clean look, something that's gonna look nice sitting in the car. And without the emissions equipment on it, although we will have a catalytic converter, um, this car will probably drive a little bit better, maybe have a little bit more power, and this being a heritage build, we just want something very simple and really fun to drive. Now, with all of that being said, we did take this thing outside, gave it a good wash after we pulled all the hard parts off of it. But since it was cleaned up, now we notice there are a couple of things that have been probably touched or replaced. The engine oil pan has been off of this thing because there's a little bit of silicone on the gasket surface here, plus the timing cover's been off of it. And that's actually a really important thing to notice solely for the fact is, in order to get the timing cover off of it, you have to pull the cylinder head. Well, if you add those three things up, they've been off the engine, leads us to believe somebody's been down inside of here, so there's really no point in going too far with this. Plus, it made some pretty good numbers for an L28 sitting on the dyno. So we'll just go ahead, replace some of the gaskets we need to, put on some of the parts that are gonna be easier since this thing is out of the engine bay, and then we're gonna give this thing a killer paint job so it looks just like it did when it came from Datsun. We'll go ahead and start up here on the valve cover. We'll get that off, run that down to the blast cabinet, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll start with some gaskets, get this thing painted. So one big thing to note here, the reason why I took the pan off with the engine sitting vertically like this is just in case there's anything in the bottom of the pan or any sludge, we didn't want to flip the engine over too early and have all of that fall back into the engine itself. So now that we got it off and everything's clean, we can flip this thing over and start cleaning all the gasket surfaces 
get this thing back sealed up, and then we'll move on to paint. A scrape like this, big thing to do is try to scrape out. That way, this gasket, or in this case, this is all like silicone or RTV. I'm gonna push this outside of the engine so we don't drop anything down here. The crankcase part. What I'm gonna do is put a couple dabs or a light coat of silicone right here where the timing cover meets the block itself. The back's the same thing where the rear main cap meets the block here. While Jeremy is putting the engine back together, I was prepping the valve cover for paint. So with Jimmy taking care of the valve cover, I went ahead and masked the engine off so we can start putting some paint on this thing. A little trick here, you can use some aluminum foil or tin foil. You can mold that around all the pieces where you don't want paint to land so you don't have to clean it up later. This is a whole lot cheaper than tape and paper, and it's a lot quicker. We're gonna spray the cylinder head and the timing cover with cast aluminum, and then we're gonna re-mask off, and we'll spray the engine block with the blue that we chose. So, mask on, we'll get started. That's a nice blue right there. All right guys, well the paint has had plenty of time to dry here. Now it's the best part, unmask and just kind of see what everything looks like all together. Now I've got the last piece. We did the valve cover in a wrinkle black just to give it a little bit of texture. We even sanded the top so you can kind of see the Nissan. Just get a good look at this thing, what it's gonna look like when it's in the engine bay. Yeah, look how good that looks. All complete, it's gonna look great yep. in the car. Yeah, that looks really neat. We do a little fabricating to make our six-speed manual transmission bolt up to the L28 engine. We're almost ready to drop our L28 back in the car to test fit some more parts. And the next thing on the list is this transmission. We've got this CD009 from our friends at Nissan, so huge thanks to them. And these transmissions are really neat because they are kind of universal in the swap world. I've seen them used behind LS's, 2JZ's, L28's, RB's, tons of stuff. And they're very strong for what they cost. They're relatively inexpensive compared to like a T56 or something out of a Corvette. So really stout and relatively cheap. Now to get hours behind our L28, we have to do a couple things. We actually have to cut the bell housing off, which sounds pretty extreme, but very common practice for the swap world. So we're gonna come in here and cut behind this uh, casting rib right here, remove the bell housing, and then we have an adapter plate to go onto a different bell housing and then behind the engine. The other thing here, I just capped off this vent just to make sure we don't get any aluminum dust inside the case. There are some components inside the bell housing that I wanna make sure to avoid when I'm getting the bell housing off. So I'm just gonna make sure not to plunge too deep with the cutoff wheel. There you go. I've got the stock bell housing cut off our CD009 transmission. And now how do we actually adapt it to the L28? We did some searching on the internet and found quite a few different kits, and we found one that we liked from Jim Wolf Technologies, and this is only part of it right here. But this plate, basically, this face will go up against the transmission and replaces the front plate that's on it right now. 
Then this side will bolt to our bell housing. And this bell housing, we actually purchased an entire transmission from a junkyard. It's an automatic transmission from an early 90s 240SX. And obviously this bell housing unbolts from the transmission itself. And this shares the same pattern with the L28. So we've got all of our hardware, got a gasket. We'll just take the front cover off, get everything on, and then we'll be ready to get the engine in the car. All right, you may notice here that there is a gap between this adapter plate and the transmission, and it should be like that, because if you don't grind down enough material, then this plate won't seal against the transmission, and also your bell housing might sit a little bit cockeyed. But that wraps it up for our CD009, and it's gonna work great behind our L28. But let's say you go a different route with your Z car and do the popular LS swap, there is another option for you. And a couple of those options could be a Tremec TKO 5-speed or their T56 6-speed. And the guys over at American Powertrain can help you out in either one of those cases. And they also offer more than just transmissions. They've got their Hydromax hydraulic clutch kits, which include their hydraulic throwout bearings and their master cylinders. They also have shifters to help you guys relocate the shifters to match your project. Plus, you can pick up some bell housings, and in some of the kits, you can even get some drive shafts. So, if you're looking to transfer an LS into your Datsun project or in any one of your projects, why don't you check out American Powertrain? Coming up, we take a ride in the new Z to get some ideas to bring our 280 up to the next level. All right, Jeremy, we're in the new 2023 Nissan Z. I think this is a heck of a car to start with. All right, everybody, we have a special guest in car today because we're both riding in the car. Uh, this is Sam Cates with Nissan, and we are driving, or I'm riding, in a brand new Nissan Z. So what exactly are we sitting in? Well, it's uh, great to be here. Um, we're in the, the new 2023 Nissan Z performance. Tell me a little bit about the car now. We've gotten to see it um, only two or three times, and the car is completely different when you see it in person, but the car is completely different as you're driving it, too. Like, this is a truly a sports car now. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Nissan and Z have, have always been intertwined, right? This, right? The Z is the like the purest form of Nissan's DNA that, that we hope people find in all of our models, but uh, this this is the halo. And um, this car, of course, builds on a lot of heritage and traditions over 50 years, in fact. And uh, this is now the seventh generation um, Z car. And this one, uh, V6, 400 horsepower 400 horsepower standard we are driving one that is a six-speed manual that's right six-speed manual standard boulder gray which i think is the best color ever it's awesome <laughs> it's uh it's so unique it's so different it's unique i guess it's the easy way to say that and ironically this is the exact color that we're going to paint ours so we're paying uh, homage to we're kind of going both ways with this we're taking a brand new color we're putting it on an old z or our platform um, trying to mesh the new with the old. I love that. That that is what Z is. It's uh, you know taking what has worked in the past and trying to update it for the modern world. You know that '70s muscle car, sports car era stuff. Like that's to me that's where it all started because that's that's where my passion comes from is that old stuff. So. Absolutely, uh, and that's what's so cool about the car hobby is it's it's the feeling that a car gives you. 
Uh, there's many different flavors, right? Right. You know, muscle car, sports car, even you know, sports sedan, etc. But yeah. they all they all kind of deliver that same feeling of, of speed and adrenaline. Yeah. And and yeah, driver connection. So there was a, a lot of emphasis on uh, the driver and machine connection. So how the driver feels behind the wheel and the relationship that the driver makes with the car. Mm -hmm. What does the car tell you? How do your inputs affect uh, the quality of the drive? Um, these are all extremely important when designing a new Z car. When you've got, you know, the heritage of Nissan and the Z platform, it, it's a long heritage. The cars have been around for 50-ish years, right? That's right, yeah, 53 years, so starting 1969 with the 240Z, which um, you know you you pointed out is, is what the front of the car um, pays homage to. Mm -hmm. um, very similar uh, grill and headlight design, as well as the hood bulge, that Y shape, which uh, I think your 280 has as well. Right. Um, and then the rear of the car really takes uh, homage to the fourth generation uh, Z32 from the 90s. I think that's the best. But yeah, that driver machine connection was what Z-Car is all about. It's, uh, we know that a lot of customers will use these as daily drivers, as well as many customers that will use it for a weekend escape. Right. Um, so the car has to be uh, really accommodating to all sorts of driving scenarios. So The V6 that's in here, it's a three liter? Three liter V6 twin turbo. But it's not new, right? That's been that's around. That's right, so it's new for Z-Car, but um, customers will recognize it from the Infiniti Q50 and Q60 Red Sport 400 models, um, which have been around for a few years now. So there's a lot of reliability built up and a lot of uh, support already existing for the motor. So we know that a lot of customers um, will, will buy uh, performance parts for the car. Yeah. Um, so there's a, you know, a large portfolio of parts already available to support this car as soon as it launches. Well, our Z, we are gonna paint our Z this uh, boulder gray, so when we're done, we're gonna have to get these two cars back together. Absolutely. And, uh, just do a real good comparison to it, but uh, we're super excited to be able to put our Z together, stay on the heritage side of things, but also move with some newer parts on ours. So. Absolutely, can't wait to see the final result. It should be fun. Today on Carcass, it's time to upgrade the handling on our 78 Datsun 280Z with stronger suspension all the way around. We'll add a new differential to help handle our six-speed transmission and install beefier rotors and brakes. Plus, we'll see what accessories Nismo has to offer for your Nissan. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass. Well, we're well underway on our Datsun 280Z project. We've got the engine out and the transmission out, and we've even got them cleaned up. Now it's time to work on one thing that we love to do the most, and that is suspension work. And this car had pretty good suspension for its day, but we do have some better stuff to put under it. So we have to get everything out from underneath. And the only thing we have to do up top is just get the nuts off the top of the struts, but otherwise we'll get the car up and get everything out. All right, so now we're on the bottom. Um, pretty simple down here too. We just gotta get the e-brake cables disconnected, get the sway bar disconnected from the body itself, and then there are 10 bolts holding the subframe in. So we'll kind of get those loose, bring the car down a little bit, um, get something to roll out the subframe on, and that'll be it. I'm gonna lower the jack down mm -hmm. slowly. I don't think it's gonna come out completely. All right. 
Uh, Jack's off. Completely. Here, I'll step on it a little bit. No, wait. It's almost just kind of stuck on those studs, right? Yeah. Um, let I'll me do. get a pry bar. I'll try to rotate the front up. There it goes. That did it. So now I'm going to go back down with the jack. You can raise the car up, too, at that point. Okay. Okay. Brake cables. You're good. Good? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, that should do it. I do really like suffering cars because they are this easy to take apart. You don't have to take off each individual component. You just take out one big thing and then you're ready to move on. So the rear suspension that we pulled out of the Datsun is pretty unique in the fact that it's rear independent suspension. This is more commonly what you would find in the front of a newer car or an SUV or a crossover. The way that this system works, you have to have something in the center to move the car forward. That's our differential here. Then we have two separate axle shafts and then connected to that we have two separate hubs and all of this can move independently from each other to give you a better ride. Now this was commonly found in the front of some vehicles, but to be found in the back of an older vehicle is pretty uncommon. So when it came time for us to do an upgrade, we had to go to the right spot. And that place is called Apex Engineered. Now these guys specialize in parts for your Datsun and your Nissans from 240, 260, 280, and even beyond that. Now our old rear suspension is big and bulky and very heavy, and Apex builds all of their stuff out of steel tubing, so it's very lightweight and it's very strong. We have their front and their rear suspension set up, but in the rear we've got their lower control arms, we've got their subframe here, and we even have the hubs so you can run a different set of coilovers. Now we took our kit one step further and we're gonna be using some parts out of a newer Z. So Apex built their rear subframe to handle a different rear diff and we're gonna be doing the hubs with a different brake upgrade a little bit later. Now before I get all of this stuff assembled and installed, I got a whole bunch of cleaning I gotta do underneath our Z. We finished installing our rear suspension with new coilovers and upgraded axle shafts. Hey guys, welcome back. Now during the break, we took care of a couple things. Now Apex sends their cross member and it fits a 240, a 260, and a 280. Now even though those are all considered the S chassis, there are some variants in those chassis that we had to look at. So we had to come up here and kind of notch into this rear cross member on the body here to fit the differential that we're running. Now this diff is out of a 370Z and we got this one directly from Nissan and the subframe is actually built to accept this differential. It's gonna work perfect in our car and it goes up here and installs very simple with these two studs and we've got a couple of clamps. So we'll get this into place and we'll keep moving forward. This can be a little tricky to get in here, what we'll do is get the bolts started and we'll slowly tighten down both sides and the back. And we'll slowly draw everybody up, then we'll move on to the control arms. Now that we have the lower control arm installed, it's time to move on to this upright. Now, Datsun is a little unique in the fact that they actually have coilovers and shocks that weld onto their uprights. So we're gonna be running a set of BC racing coilovers. Now, Apex makes their uprights to use a bunch of different manufacturers of coilovers. So what we need to do with our coilover is set it over the top of the upright then we need to take a measurement between the bottom of the coilover and what is exposed here of the metal. What we're gonna do then is transfer that distance to the top of this upright and we're gonna end up cutting that off because the main goal here is to get the bottom of our coilover to sit right at the edge of this exposed metal. So we'll go ahead, take that measurement and then we're gonna set everything in the car and then we'll just tack it into place for now. Then we'll get the car on the ground, see if we like how it sits and then we can weld everything up from there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Roughly five eighths of an inch, I think. So now we'll get this into place and then we'll go up top and put the coil over in and then we'll get everything kind of lined up. Now we'll slide this together. I'll hold it up here with this screw jack. Then I'm gonna go grab the TIG welder. We're just gonna put a tack on it. That way we can get both sides done and we'll even do the front, set the car down on the ground and get a good feel of what it looks like. Then we can always come back and weld everything up. Okay, now that we have the coilovers in the car, we're gonna move on to the axle shafts. Now this is a stock CV axle from the 370Z that we got from Nissan, but Apex sends you a different center section to make this the correct length. I just need to tear this apart, switch out the center section, and we'll get this in the car. Okay, now there's a little snap ring on the end of the axle shaft here. Use our snap ring pliers. Try not to send that sailing across the room. And then this side just pulls off. There should. There it goes. I'm just gonna do that to the other side too. All right, before we assemble the new axle shaft, we're gonna go ahead and clean all these parts up. Now let's go wipe them down. We'll assemble the axle. Okay, so we'll start assembling our axle now. Now we're not gonna put the boots on because this is kind of a mock-up stage. We wanna make sure everything fits. Once we know it fits, then we'll go ahead and take it all back apart, add some fresh grease, and then put the boots on it. All right, that's all the way down. I'm gonna put the C-clip on. We'll slide that part in and put the big C-clip on. And all we have to do is put the top C-clip in like this and then kind of hammer the other end on. There, I bottomed out. Now we can go put it in the car. Should be able to fish this all up and in here without taking anything back apart. And the last thing to go on is the hub that we got from Nissan from the 370. We also have the backing plate with the e-brake shoes and then this caliper bracket from Apex. Everything should slide right on. We'll bolt it up. Everything should fit. And then we'll have to just move on to the other side. We show you some of the performance accessories that Nismo has to offer for your Nissan. Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Jeremy and I have made a lot of good headway on our 280Z. We've gotten the rear suspension buttoned up and today we have a special guest with us. We have Jim from Nismo and he's gonna kind of talk to us about who they are and what they offer. So Jim, what is Nismo? That is a great question, Jimmy. Nismo is a bit of an enigma to not only some of our employees, but the world. Nismo is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. A lot of our customers see us as sort of like one or two things, whether we are just making cars or we're making parts, but there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. Nismo sort of got started in the 80s, uh, kind of like just supporting all the racing that Nissan wanted to do to really get competitive. And you really started to see parts coming out of Nismo into uh, vehicles in around 1989 on the R32 and S13 platforms. And that's where you will see some of the parts that, that we offer. On the other side of that, there's a whole team in Japan that makes cars. So they're the guys that take a uh, 370Z and make a Nismo 370Z, or they take a GTR and they make it a Nismo GTR, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's just a whole group of really smart guys that do a great job of put, putting these cars together and taking them to the next level. Cool. And so what is your role at Nismo then? It's a great question. Uh, still learning. Uh, basically stateside, I'm part of what's called Nissan Motorsports, which is also kind of like the U.S. division of Nissan. There's Nismo Japan, that's the Amori factory. That's where you see all the cool shots where like guys from different car magazines go and it's like it's a holy grail or whatever. Yep. 
Stateside, it's not quite as glamorous, but we're working on it. Uh, but for me, we started off as a mom and pop shop. Okay. So that was like, if dealers knew or pro shops knew that they could get some parts or some JDM accessories or OE type parts, they would come to us and order them. And what we've done this year is really start to transition from that mom and pop design to how can we get parts into the uh, warehouses that Nissan operates so that we can get parts to our dealers and ultimately to our customers. Okay, cool. And that's happened this year, so anything you want to order, you can ask your dealer, and if he can't get it, make it make the request, and we'll work on you know trying to get those parts. Sweet. And so on the table here, we've got some of what you guys offer, and it's kind of in, I would say, three different categories. We have like the really high-level performance stuff, we have more accessories, and then we have like the JDM, just OE style stuff. So what is like what is this down here? What what do you guys offer? Okay, so this is kind of highlighting some of the uh, JDM OEM parts that if you had a JDM car that you needed to fix, or if you had a US car that you wanted to upgrade. So these taillights could fit in a hatchback S13, so that's a US 240SX. They come from a 180SX. So Japan, unlike the States, got a lot of cool drive lines and parts and accessories. And as an enthusiast, I was one that just wanted to get some of those JDM parts, add some flair to my car, sure. and just kind of stand out. That's, that's I think, as an enthusiast, as a Nismo head, that's, the, that's, what, that's just what we all want. Yeah, cool. And in parallel to that, we also have things like, you know, a thin diff, diff cover if you have a 370Z, some clear taillights, but there's tons and tons and tons of OE parts. So mm -hmm. if you have that R33 that you just imported and you scuffed the front bumper or you broke an arrow or you need an intercooler, sure. these are the things that might be really hard to come by, but those are things we've really worked on trying to get into our supply chain so that if a customer needs it, we can meet that demand. Cool. And so let's say you have maybe a Sentra that's less uh, performance oriented or something, you guys just have straight up accessories just to kind of tastefully do your own thing with your car. Sometimes it's tasteful, sometimes maybe it's not so tasteful. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a place for everybody in Nismo and that's yeah. what I really I really like. So if you have a Versa, if you have a Leaf, like there's an engineer I work with who has a Leaf, he, he kits it out and there's a part of you that goes, is that wrong? And there's a part of you that goes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And this is where you can add things like lug nuts or you could add a shifter, oil filler cap, these don't add horsepower per se, but you could tell your friends they do, and it's just kind of fun. Yeah. And here is something that I would personally put on my own car. It's a GT um, titanium uh, shift knob, straight straight from Nismo, Japan. This might okay. look really nice on your car. Might have to steal that. I'll leave it here just in case. <laughs> and outside of all of that, so say you're not quite sure where you land, mm -hmm. you like the brand, you like the idea, Maybe your girlfriend likes the logo and you're looking for some clothing. Personalization is great here. So mm -hmm. if you wanted a t-shirt like this, if you wanted to have a coffee mug at your desk just to kind of add some revs to your coffee, or if you wanted some sunglasses, there, there's, there's tons and tons of kit we have available. So if you just wanted to spruce up your life a little bit, you can have any, anything you want. Very nice. And so back here, we've got a 370Z. That's got some Nismo stuff on. It's got wheels, has a little carbon cover panel on one of the pillars, mirrors. And so you guys offer a lot for a lot of different platforms yes. and moving more onto the performance side, you guys have like some really high level stuff like huge brakes, turbos, wheels. What does that look like at Nismo? Well, this is sort of getting into the more of the performance side. So this is kind of like JDM and then you accessorize it and yep. then you're like, I want to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that's where people like me that like to mod cars in your garage, you'll see this and you go, oh, that's an S15 GT28 turbo. I'd like that for my S15 that I'm importing. Yep. Or you have a Sentra and it has an SR20 and you're like, that makes sense. And you bolt it on and you make it work. Possibly you get some injectors right. and you bring it all together with probably some engine management unless you got a JDM ECU. But aside from that side of it, you also have things like these uh, 370Z big brakes. So these are six pot front calipers and vented rotors. It's all part of a big kit. So if there's a if there's a person that has a 370 and they want to turn it into just a time attack vehicle, they want to track it, or they really just like how they how those look and when they go to the grocery store, they just want to stop on a dime. Yeah. That does it. Of course, intakes, we also have all kinds of other kit. And at the end, the sort of holy grail for our Nissan Nismo customers is the LM GT4 wheels. Cool. So those are wheels that we get about once a year. Uh, they're special order. We usually sell through them pretty quick, but everybody seems to want those. And then also coming out is these are these LMRS1 wheels here in the back that are on this Z car. Yeah. 
as another option. So if a customer maybe likes that, but maybe it's not on their price point or maybe doesn't work with the lines of their car, we have lots and lots of other wheel options for right. our customers. Yeah, I think that's awesome that you guys offer this stuff and not only for a lot of different platforms, but you can just go to your dealer and get that kind of thing. So, so if you guys have any Nissan projects, make sure you check out Nismo because you can go straight to your dealer and order it, or you can go to nismoparts.nissanusa to get your stuff. Let's check out this car, because I right. haven't walked around it all the way, but it's got some. Coming up, our Z gets a bigger brake and rotor combination. Plus, we fit our new wheels and tires designed for style and performance. Now, we have the rear suspension already installed from Apex, and we went ahead and did the same thing up front. Now, the big component of their front suspension is this tubular cross member. They have it set up so you guys can run a couple different series of engines. If you choose to do so, you just use a different engine mount. You can run an RB, 2JZ, an LS, or in our case, the L28. Plus, they have these brackets that run back here to the tension bar mount, so it makes this setup extremely rigid. Now, traveling out from there, we have a fully adjustable aluminum tension bar. That means we can set up our suspension just the way that we like it. Plus, we're running their Apex Quick Steer Knuckles. We have their hub mounts here. We're running a set of BC coilovers, just like in the back. Now, just like in the back, we're running a bunch of different stuff from a 370Z. That's the same thing we're doing up front. We're using a set of their front hubs. And since all the hubs match all the way around the car, we're gonna be running a set of 370Z brakes as well. Now, this brake setup is gonna be a huge upgrade over the stock brakes on the Datsun for two good reasons. One, both front and rear rotors measure in at a whopping 14 inches. Plus, the front calipers are a four piston caliper and the rear calipers are dual piston calipers. Now, this setup is out of a 370Z Sport and Apex builds their kits, so this stuff bolts directly into place. So let's get started. Slide this caliper on here, get it to fit, put some bolts in it, and we'll be done. To get our Datsun back on the ground, we have a brand new set of wheels and tires with Rota's RKRs in a 17 by 9.5 and, and Continental's brand new Extreme Contact Force in a 255 4017. These tires are really cool because they are an ultra high performance summer tire, but also designed for endurance racing. They feature a 200 treadwear rating, so if we decide to take our car and do some spirited driving, the car's going to have no problem gripping in the turns. But let's say we take it to a track, which this car is very capable of now with the new suspension. These tires can go lap after lap. They'll handle the heat and they'll give us consistent lap times. These tires also feature their Sport Plus technology, which gives better grip and handling in wet conditions and better tread life. To get these on here, we have longer wheel studs from ARP, a bare brakes wheel spacer, and some Dorman lug nuts that we got from Summit Racing. So we've kind of mocked this up before and we might have to go a little bit thicker on the wheel spacer. Uh, these brakes are huge, so um, we just want to make sure we have enough clearance for when everything heats up and it kind of expands. All right, let's get a look at it with all the weight on it. I like the tread design. Yeah, no, it, the tires look cool. It fits yeah. the car very, very well. Mm -hmm. Get it all the way down on the ground here once and see. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, we might be on the lift still. Yeah, we're still on the hoist, so it would yeah. go lower than this yet. Yeah, and once we get the alignment set and get the tires kind of tilted in with the camber and everything, the flares should cover it. Should look good. Yeah. What do you think? We wrap it up for the day? Uh, let's put on the wheel chocks and Yeah, get we a can do look. that. Yeah. If you guys like anything you've seen on the show today, check out Power Nation TV. I'll grab the wheel jacks. On this episode of Carcass, our Datsun undergoes a huge transformation. We'll hack up our fenders so we can add some flares, plus bolt on a set of fender mirrors and give our 280Z a true JDM feel. Then we head down to the paint booth for some bodywork tech and a total color revision. Hey everyone, welcome back to Carcass. Jeremy and I have been making some good headway on our 1978 280Z, and this car came to us bone stock, so even with the little bit of work we've done to it so far, it's quite a bit different. And if you haven't seen what we've done, 
Here's a quick rundown and also what we have planned next. After a quick test drive, we got to work by pulling the engine and trans out so we could give the L28 a quick refresh and make the swap to the CD009 six-speed manual. Tackling the suspension started with us removing all parts from the front and the rear of the Datsun. Our Apex suspension setup was bolted in along with an upgraded diff from a newer 370Z. We followed that up with a set of BC coilovers. More 370 parts came into play with a full set of 14-inch rotors, four piston calipers in the front, and dual piston calipers in the rear. Some 17x9 Rota wheels and Continental's Extreme Contact Force tires took care of filling out the wheel wells. Up next on the list of things to do will be some body mods, including a set of fender flares, removing the crash bumpers and swapping them out for a sleeker set, and adding a pair of fender mirrors. We'll finish the project off by painting our dots in boulder gray, which is a color you can find on the newly released Z. So as you guys can see, we have the engine and transmission in the car that's simulating all the weight we need to compress the suspension because this is the ride height that Jimmy and I are shooting for. You can see there's not a lot of room between the tire and the fender. So we're gonna be cutting this out and running a ZG style fender flare. Now this is as close as you can get to the JDM style fender flare that came on this S30 chassis. Now Jimmy and I have done a couple mock-ups and we've looked for a good spot to put these and it's entirely up to your dis discretion and we think we're going to run it up this high i don't think so no we're actually going to run it low again you can put it wherever you want um, all we're looking to do here is give us that jdm look get the flare on it and give us some clearance so the tires don't run into the fenders now the idea here is to drill a couple of holes. We're going to use these cool Clico clamps. This is just going to hold everything in place so we don't have to continuously bolt it on and unbolt it. So we're going to mark some holes here. We'll come back, cut the fender, and then we just got to do that three more times. You like that? Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Clecos are a nice tool to hold together sheet metal panels or in our case, fiberglass fender flares. They do come in a few different sizes, so you'll have to make sure you use the correct size drill bit. We've got our Clecos in our fender now, so this thing's fitting pretty tight to the body. One hole's a little bit misplaced. We'll have to go back and adjust it for the final installation, but otherwise we can get the car up in the air and start cutting the fender. So I'm gonna trace a line on the inside of the flare on the fender here. And I'll also trace a line on the outside. That way we know exactly where to cut and where our mounting holes are gonna be. Get these off of here. Lay down some tape and then we'll start cutting. Okay, so we have the fender cut out for the fender flare, and since we're up here making a mess anyways, we're gonna go ahead and ditch these marker lights. Jimmy and I don't very much care for them. They stick out entirely too far, and we're just going for a more sleeker look with the car. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this. We'll build a little patch panel, and then we'll get it welded into place. Our patch panel will be made out of 16 gauge sheet metal.
Once we have the correct shape, we'll stitch weld it into place, making sure not to put too much heat into the panel, causing it to warp. We'll grind the welds down flush and then finish them off with a sanding disc. All right, well we have the fender flare on the car. It's sitting at ride height and we took care of the marker light area. We still have a little more work to do. We gotta come down here and kind of trim the bottom of the valence so our tires can go to full lock. But for now, I got three more corners to take care of. We ditch the park bench bumpers for a sleeker look and add some more JDM styling cues. So we've got all four fender flares mocked up on the car now and it looks really good. But something to note is that the rear is a little bit different than the front. Because when we cut the fender, we not only cut the outside skin, but there's also some inner structure to it as well. So when we put this thing back together, you have to weld the two pieces together, and then when we finish the car, we'll go ahead and smear some seam sealer on it to make sure that's watertight. So now moving on with the exterior modifications, we're gonna get rid of the bumpers, and for good reason, because they're pretty ugly. So we've got this really cool carbon fiber piece, and this is basically a 240Z bumper just to make this thing look a little bit more slim. So it's just as easy as getting the old stuff off, getting the new one on. in once, see how it fits. Uh, inside ones, right? Inside yeah, bolt. inside bolt. The trick is not letting the bolt fall through the bumper. There yes. I got mine started. All right, got that side in. Working on it. With the front bumper on the car, this thing definitely has more style than it did before. And even without a bumper on it at all, it looked way better than the stock bumper that was on it. So now to move forward with the JDM style, we have our fender mount mirrors instead of the door mounted ones. And we have to know where they go. So we've got two templates already taped on the fender. There's two holes marked, so we'll just center punch these, drill the holes, and then install the mirrors. To make it easy, I'll drill a pilot hole and then use a step drill bit to get the final size. The mirrors are a super easy upgrade that give our car a ton of style. Stay tuned, we show you some tips on making those body mods as smooth as glass. All right guys, well we've made our way down here into the prep booth and it's time to straighten this car out. We've done a bunch of metal work, we shaved the marker lights, we made the fenders and the quarters quite a bit bigger so we can run our fender flares. Plus we decided to ditch the rear bumper so Jimmy did a bunch of metal work back there. So the steps from here are pretty simple. We're gonna prep the areas that are bare metal. We're gonna lay down some mud or some body filler, straighten that all out. Then we'll prep the entire car and get it ready for some high build primer. To make sure our body filler has a good bite, we'll scratch the area up with 36 grit sandpaper.
I like to mix my mud heavy because I don't like to wait around before I can start sanding. Applying even pressure with the paddle, I like to make it as straight as possible even though I'm going to come back later and sand it. This just makes the job go quite a bit faster. To get this straight, we'll first knock it down with 36 grit, and then we'll switch over to 80. All right, guys. Well, that feels really good. It took a really nice shape with the fender here. Now, we're not going to take it any further because we do have to 180 the entire car to get it ready for primer. And when it comes time to doing all of that work, we always like an extra set of hands. So, everybody, this is Michael Huxley. He's the newest member of the Power Nation team. You're gonna see them all over the four shows that we do here at Power Nation. And like I said, an extra set of hands is always good. So he's got a sanding block. I'm gonna pick mine up. We're gonna get back to work. We're using sanding blocks instead of a DA because the car is already pretty straight. So we're gonna use the existing paint to make it just a bit straighter. Working our way around the car will take care of the rest of the bodywork. We're going to make sure that the car is completely sanded with no shiny spots left. Sanding the car will give it the texture for the next step. All right, well, the car is all sanded down and we even masked it off. And Jimmy and Michael are going to hit this thing with some wax and grease remover. And I'm going to go mix the high build primer. This 2K primer will fill in any small imperfections and will apply two wet coats, giving it ample time to flash between each coat. All right, Jeremy's got the high build down now, so now we're gonna block it down until it's smooth. This step is started with 180 grit to knock down all the high spots off the primer. Using a long sanding block, that will ensure that we keep all the panels as straight as possible. We'll work our way through 180 grit, all the way up to 320 before we head into the booth. Well, coming up, after all of our hard work, it's time to put this Datsun in its new color. After hours and hours of body work, we have the Datsun nice and smooth, and we're going to get ready to lay down some coat. 
All right, but before we can get to that step, we do have to lay down some sealer. Now what sealer does is it gives the car a good solid color, plus it gives us a good chemical bond when we lay down the paint. It's pretty easy to mix up, it's four to one. So we'll get this mixed up here, get it in the gun, then we'll go tack the car off, we'll start spraying. Before we begin, we'll tack the car off to get rid of any leftover dust and lay down one medium coat. The overspray you see on the door gaps is where we already laid down body color in the door jams. This will just make it easier when we transition into painting. Jeremy's got the sealer down on the car, so we're ready for some color. And we're going with Boulder Gray, which is a color offered on the new Z. So we just got to mix this one to one with the reducer. As long as Jeremy can lay it down, this is going to look super good. Scrape the bottom and the sides. Got it. Start in the engine bay with a touch-up gun to make sure I cover all the hard-to-reach areas. I'm using a different style to me while I'm painting, and painting each panel individually, keeping in mind where I start and stop. This is a little different than painting the entire side of the car in one fell swoop, but either way works. Just choose the style that best fits the project and your preference. We have our base color down, now it's time to move on to some clear. Not only is this going to make the car look really shiny and wet, it's also going to give us some UV protection as well. Spraying the clear can be a little bit tricky. Just make sure you follow the correct overlap and don't leave any dry sprayed areas. You want to make sure it looks like glass when you're done. So take your time, move slowly, and lay it down wet.
You know, Jimmy, this is the slickest paint job I've ever laid down, and what better car to put it on? Yeah, you did a heck of a job, and just wait till we cut and buff this thing. It's going to look even better. And it matches the new Z, so we can't ask for much more. We should get a couple of big gulps. Well, see you later. Today on Carcass, our Datsun 280Z Heritage Project is coming to an end. We'll install a new clutch and the CD009 six-speed transmission. We fabricate a custom exhaust, plus we finish up under the hood with a modern fuel injection system that will keep our Z running smooth. Then we head out to the track to see how our Datsun stands up with the new Z and have a little fun with some good friends. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass. The car you see before you is the 280Z that Jimmy and I have been working on for quite a while. Now when we chose to build this car, we wanted to do more of a JDM feel, so we've done a couple modifications. We went ahead and cut the fenders and the quarters, we added the fender flares, and then we moved the mirrors up here on the fender to give it more of that fair lady feel. Now to pay homage to the new Z, we decided to paint this car kind of a bold color. This is bolder gray. Now it's not a new color to Nissan, but it is a color that you can find on the new Z. And we think it just matches our car and fits it perfectly. And obviously this car is really far along into the assembly process. A couple of small details we wanna share about that. You know, we went through all the hardware and found a bunch of nice stainless stuff. And also, as we were putting the car together, you find a bunch of small parts and pieces. You pull them from the table, you start putting them on, and you realize how dirty everything is relative to just the nice, clean nature of the car as it is now. So we went ahead and cleaned everything up, painted it, just to give everything a nice, cohesive look. And to stay with that cohesive look, we did paint the fender flares to match the mirrors. It's more of a flat black. And probably one thing you guys have noticed already is the fact that we went ahead and installed some yellow headlights. Now we feel this gives our car a more aggressive look and they were pretty simple to install. These are just a standard LED headlight. They're seven inches. We got them from Holly and they fit directly into our headlight socket. So. And now going forward, some things that we have to do to finish up the car. We have to get the transmission in it, the full clutch set up. We have to fabricate an entire exhaust system. And also the last thing to kind of wrap it up is we have a new fuel injection set up to go on this engine just to make it a really nice driving car and just, you know, finish it in a good way. Yep, well then let's just get cracking. We'll finish this thing up. All right, to start us off here. We have the rest of our Jim Wolf Technologies kit, which includes a flywheel and some other stuff you're about to see. We already have the pilot bushing installed, so just get these bolts uh, torqued down and keep going. Finish torquing these to 100 pound feet. Make sure you don't forget your thread locker. Just start a couple of these for now, and then we can go ahead and throw some thread locker on it. So it uh, stays in place, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of hard to see over here, though. Transmission, Jimmy. Last time. Yeah, last time, right. There. All right, let's get a couple bolts started here. We'll tighten everybody down, move on to the cross member. And again. Don't forget to torque everything down. Now that we have the transmission in, we're going to mock up the cross member so Jeremy can take a measurement for the drive shaft. Okay. 
So the last thing we need to do to tie our engine and transmission to our differential is we need to measure for a drive shaft. Now some drive shaft shops will have you take specific measurements, but in our case we need to measure from the back of the output shaft on the transmission to the front of the flange on the differential. This one's about 34 and a half inches. Now most of the time you need to have the suspension compressed or at least the weight of the car on the suspension to make this measurement. But we have an independent rear suspension, so our differential won't move no matter what. So we'll go ahead and call in this 34 and a half. We'll get a drive shaft made. Coming up, we install new headers and build a custom exhaust for our Z. Okay, so while we're waiting on our drive shaft to be made, we're gonna tackle one more thing underneath the car, and that's the exhaust system. Now we do have a header that fits the 2.8, and this did come as a kit, but there is no off-the-shelf kit to fit the 2.8 and the CD009 transmission that we're running, so we're only gonna be using the header for this. I'm gonna go ahead and get this up inside here, get it bolted down, and then we'll start making our way out the back. Okay, so the other piece to this header kit is this kind of Y pipe right here. And as you guys can see, it really doesn't fit. Now, if you were building a four wheel drive Datsun or if you really wanted a cool transmission skid plate, this would work out great. But in our case, it's just not gonna work. But we are gonna use a piece from this. We're actually gonna come up here and cut the tube off and we're gonna use the Y. So over to the chop saw we go. All right, so after we cut this piece, I went ahead and cleaned it up on our belt sander just so we can get ready to start welding here. Now, what we're gonna end up doing is using a piece of two and a quarter. This is out of a builder's kit that we got from Summit Racing. We're gonna start just heading our way out the back, so I'll get this kind of set there. We'll fire up the welder and get it tacked in. Got her, Jimmy. Now since this is going to be a street driven car, we're going to go ahead and put in a catalytic converter. This is a high flow cat, we got it from Summit Racing, and it really shouldn't rob us of any power. So we'll get this tacked in here, and we'll keep moving backwards. All right, so to keep moving back here, we're gonna add this stainless steel butt joint clamp, and we're gonna add this 90 so we can start traveling up to our muffler. Um, this will allow us to get the exhaust out from underneath the car, and it'll also allow me to kind of turn this to get the perfect angle on it. We'll try that, Jimmy, you can tighten that one down. Now when it comes time to choosing the exhaust or the sound you guys want out of your car, Summit Racing has got you guys handled and there's a couple different options you can go with. This is what is considered to be more of a glass pack. This is a free flowing design and it's going to give you that distinctive tone that you guys remember from the 60s and the 70s. Now this is what is considered to be more of a muffler. This is made out of 409 stainless steel. It comes in a bunch of different options as far as inlet and outlet size, plus the orientation of those so you guys can choose and pick whatever you need for your project. Plus this is completely reversible, so it doesn't matter which way you install it. Inside of here is a perforated tube that's kind of wrapped in a fiberglass mesh. So this one will be a little bit quieter than the glass pack. You guys also saw us use these underneath the car. This is a butt connector or kind of a band clamp. What this allows you to do is take two pieces of the same size tubing, butt them together so you don't have to weld it. That way you can take your exhaust out of the car if you ever need to service something. Now you guys can go to Summit Racing and pick all of this stuff up. That way you can figure out what you want, what you need, and what you like to hear from underneath your car. We think we're gonna like the glass pack, so this is what we're going with.
All right, well that takes care of the mock-up stage of our exhaust. From here, we have to add a couple of hangers, take everything down, weld it up, and that'll pretty much button up everything underneath the car. We install a modern EFI system, plus protect our Datsun's paint with a little TLC. We're moving right along, back up to the top of the car, and we're gonna start installing our new fuel injection system. We're gonna start with the intake manifold, Something that we're doing with this, along with the rest of the engine, is installing ARP hardware. Just because the stock stuff over time has gotten really beat up and it doesn't look too great, so the ARP hardware is going to give some nice corrosion protection and in general it's just going to last a long time. Now to go along with the upgraded intake that Jimmy just installed, we're also going to be upgrading our fuel injection. Now the 280Z originally was fuel injected, but the old harness has seen better days and the connectors for the injectors are very brittle and makes the car very unreliable. But on the flip side of that, we have a brand new fuel injection setup. Not only will this make our car even more reliable, it's also going to clean up the underside of the hood here. So we'll just get this stuff plugged in and keep moving forward here. Now we got our fuel injection set up from the guys over at Z Car Depot. Now this is a fast fuel injection setup and it's made for an eight cylinder. But what the guys do is they set this up as a batch fire. And what that means is every injector is gonna fire every time. So it doesn't matter which way you guys hook these up as long as you hook up six of them. Speaking of that, you are gonna have two extra connectors. Don't worry about this. You can either cut them or put them back in the harness. Just get them out of the way. What we'll do is come back and clean this up a little bit later, but for now, we're just gonna connect six of these. Okay, so another thing that the Z Car Depot guys do is they send you some adapters to adapt some brackets on. Inside of the throttle body here, we have an adapter that runs a different throttle position sensor than stock that just allows you to plug the harness directly into this throttle position sensor. So now with any EFI setup, the ECU is gonna have to see some sort of RPM signal. So FAST sends this little RPM module. This connects directly to our stock distributor. That way we don't have to run some fancy distributor. And what that does is it's gonna send this RPM signal to the ECU so the fuel injection runs correctly. It installs very simple. You just run the white wire to the negative side of our coil, put the yellow wire right to the harness, and the black one just goes to ground. Okay, so another thing that we do have to do is make sure that when we connect the ECU power and ground, it goes directly to the battery. What that's gonna do is give our ECU a very clean signal so it's not dirty or noisy as they call it. And that can make our computer do some kind of wonky things. Now to do that, we're gonna be connecting it over here to an Optima yellow top battery. This will give us a bunch of cold cranking amps when we go to start it for the first time. Plus, it'll give us a bunch of reliable starts when we go and take this thing for a rip. One thing we want to do before we finally take our car out is get the exterior looking really nice. So we have Rob and Cole from Sonax to help us out. And ultimately we want to get their ceramic spray coating on the car, but we have a few steps to do before that, including a little bit of wet sanding, cutting and polishing. So we'll let these guys work their magic and make this thing really shine.
All right, guys, well, Rob and Cole did a great job really slicking this car out. They gave the color a bunch of depth and the clear is super smooth. And now it's time to give it a little bit of protection. Yep, we are going to actually put on the new ceramic spray coating. Simply spray it on, wipe it, flip your towel over, remove it, and it'll give you up to six months durability. Perfect. And it's super easy to put on, right? It's, it, it, it couldn't be any easier. Literally, <laughs> you just spray it on your towel, wipe it on the paint, flip your towel over, and wipe it off. Yeah. It'll leave the paint just really slick. Yeah, you can feel it, actually, as you're applying it. And as you're wiping it back off, it, like the car just slicks right back out. The hydrophobic capabilities of this is amazing, too. It's, I'm always amazed at when you're praying for rain, just so you can see how your protection is working. All right, guys, well, the car is super straight and slick, and we've got some good protection on it. So Jimmy and I have a couple more things to do. Obviously, we got to put the hood and the grill and the bumper on the front, but then we can take it out for a rip and have some fun with it, huh? Yeah, it'll be super fun. There's no better way to show off our finished Datsun than with some friends at the track. When we started this project, our whole plan was to honor the history of Datsun and the Z platform. We wanted to keep the proud heritage of Nissan's pursuit for performance combined with a sleek and sporty look. We believe our 280Z keeps with these core visions with a slight nod to subsequent generations of the Z family. Taking the best of the old, accentuated with the new, and adding a dash of ultimate Nissan performance to create what we feel is the perfect culmination of the Z car dynasty. So we headed out to the Nashville Super Speedway to meet up with our good friends from Nissan and see what they thought. Oh, oh yeah, wow. big flares, like big wide Ooh. tires, yellow headlights, yeah. nice. That thing is aggressive. Look at those tires on that thing. Wow, that wow. is insane. Wow. That looks that great. Looks <laughs> right. Beautiful. Oh, man. Man. We got oh, we got what a build. Wow. Fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> wow. That thing looks great. Wow. <clears throat> That's been Take a long a time coming, Look but you guys nailed it. it nailed yeah. it. It's great to actually see the two of them side by side finally. Yeah, yeah. the colors yeah, no are kidding. just oh, spot on. That's These beautiful. bumpers, fender mirrors, flares all look fantastic. The yellow headlights, nice touch. That was Thank that you. was Jimmy. I can't. Yeah, oh, and the it, only it, person it, that can take credit for that one. Well, it it great. works. It, it works really well with the color too. Yeah. I mean, it's just and these brakes just and the great. red and ties in a little bit with the with badge, the little yeah. carbon wow. subtle Labor. color there. Yeah. You know, we've had a lot of communications with you guys over the entire build and it's everybody has a little piece that they kind of brought into the car and constant phone calls and we just want to make sure everything we did we did the car justice yeah and to really bring the car to this point i mean right down to the color choice or jonathan calling you about the badges what color badges go back on the car because the yellow just didn't seem right in the z insignia but you know, that's whatever's but correct it, to the car. So. It just works too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah. I, I just think it's been a, a great opportunity to be able to support you guys on this project. And, yeah. you know, so great to touch on our heritage and, and see it here with the new Z. Yep. It's fantastic. I think the color choice was right. I've yeah. like, I've fallen in love with it more and more every day. It just more mm -hmm. and more and more. It's and the color really suits the car and it's it's so cool to see them side by side and now you can really see the influence that the designers took right. for the new Z out of all of the design elements from the original yeah. S30 chassis. Absolutely. It's impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. we really enjoyed it. It was a, a giant labor of love, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I had no doubt. But and we like, you know, we're more muscle car guys, traditional like hot rod stuff. So this being a really high level build in the import world is a really special thing yeah. for us to do. Too. Well, you guys are yeah. coming around. You're coming, you're coming <laughs> oh, yeah. to the... You're coming to the light, you know, yeah. yeah, out of the muscle car darkness and into the import mm -hmm. light. Oh, it's yeah, funny too, because you, you know, we took this car down to nothing and you learn so much about it. And I feel like now I know about just this world and this car and I can do it again with relative ease, yeah. you know, versus us working on Camaros and C10 trucks. It's like, yeah. that's what we're used to and that's what we like, but it's comfortable. Yeah. And this is a little bit uncomfortable for us. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Always good to stretch your, right. yeah. your boundaries a bit, right? Learn mm -hmm. something new. 
Man, it looks the so good, good, guys. The good Thank side you. of uncomfortable. Yeah, this thing turned yeah. out killer, guys. Yeah. yeah. Knocked it out of the park, guys. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're all here at the track. You guys brought a bunch of super nice cars, and the sun is shining. We could go do a couple laps. I mean, if everybody wants to jump in a car, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do, it. Let's, do it. let's do it. Cool. Awesome. Let's hop in and go. Sounds good. See what it can do. This will be the first time we really stretch its legs and get to use six gear on this one. Yeah. You know, besides for the testing and tuning that we get to do, mm -hmm. but. Well, the Nissan guys liked it, so I'd say that's kind of a win. I was just going to say, the best way to say that is it's a win in our book. Yeah. It's kind of scary, you know, we build this car, and of course we have their help with stuff, and we're always asking them for advice, but yeah. the ultimate kind of judgment of it, you know, rolling up on them, I'm kind of going, ah, well, did we actually do it, did, <laughs> did we not? Did, but, did we pull it off? Yeah. Right. Really got a good reaction, so you know we got to be happy about it. Well, I'm happy with the car. Period. Like you know, we're we're American muscle car guys. Yeah. That's just how we grew up when we were younger. Yeah. This has definitely pushed me one direction. Yeah, and just to learn something new, you know, it's like now we've broadened our skill set. We know a little bit more, and it's just all fun. Well, we've had a great time out here at the Nashville Super Speedway, and we want to give a giant thanks to them, plus all of the Nissan guys for bringing out their cars and for all the support for us to build our 280Z. we got a lot of daylight left, a bunch of killer cars. We're going to go enjoy the track.